Hello, this is the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Thank you so much for tuning into this video in which we will review what we went through in week eight. So we just looked at the area between two curves. So I have the blue curve and the red curve, the area between them shaded in green. So I could estimate this area using rectangles or trapeziums, but I can use calculus integrals to find this exact area. Now, I drew the same graph over here because I wanted to make this point. The good news when finding the area between two curves is it doesn't matter whether one or both of the curves are above or below the x-axis. We don't need to find out when the curves are below and when the curves are above the x-axis. The reason is because if I have this area here, I could just shift it like I've done here, I've just moved it up. This area doesn't change if you move the two curves up. So that's why it doesn't matter where the area is in relation to the x-axis. The bad news is, however, you need to always know which curve is on top. So to find this area here, I'm essentially just finding the area under the blue curve minus the area under the red curve. All I need to do is a simple integral. So it's just the integral of the curve on top minus the curve on the bottom. Note here in this region where I want to find the area, the blue curve is always above the red curve. So blue curve minus red curve, and we're minusing the whole shebang. We're minusing this whole thing here. So expanding the brackets, we just get this. Now, hopefully you're asking yourself, wait, to find an area, don't we need to use definite integrals? Don't I need numbers here and here? Well, yeah, we do need to know the x values between which we're finding the area. So we need to know the x value here, and we need to know the x value here. We need to know the points of intersection of these curves. So if you're asked to find the intersection points algebraically, what you need to do is equate the two curves. This equals this. So we've got where first curve equals second curve. That's where they will intersect. So I need to make one side equal to zero. So what I'm going to do is subtract x from both sides and add x squared to both sides. I get 2x squared plus 4x minus 6 which is actually very similar to what I had down here, just the negative of it. So to find where this equals zero, you can use whichever method you want. You can use factorization, quadratic formula, doesn't matter. So I'll use the quadratic formula because most people tend to like that. So x equals minus b, b is the coefficient of x, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. So remember, this is giving us two solutions. We have minus 4 plus root 64 over 4 and minus 4 minus root 64 over 4. So the two solutions we get, x equals minus 3 and x equals 1. They are the x values of the point of intersection. So our integral, where we're finding the area between the two curves, is going to be between minus 3 and 1. Remember, we always put the smaller number on the bottom. So now we're going to go ahead and anti-differentiate this and evaluate it at these two points. So this gives us minus 2x cubed on 3. So remember, we increase the power by 1 and then divide by the new power. Then it'll be minus 2x squared. And remember, integral of 6 isn't 0. It doesn't vanish. It's 6x. We don't need to add the c for definite integrals. We're just going to evaluate between minus 3 and 1. So we get 10 over 3 plus 18, and that will give us 21.3 recurring units squared. That is the exact area in green. All right, let's look at a more difficult example. So let's look at finding the area here shaded in yellow between the blue and the red curve. So unfortunately, you will sometimes have a case where one of the curves is on top some of the time. Now, when we have an example like this, unfortunately, we need to do a separate integral for here where the red curve's on top and a separate integral here for when the blue curve is on top. 
So again, we need to know the x values of the points of intersection. So on the previous slide, we were able to do it algebraically because it was just a quadratic. You should be able to do that algebraically. But when we have a cubic here, if we wanted to find the points of intersection, we'd be solving a cubic, and rather than use polynomial long division, we could just use our graphics calculator. And it should tell us that we have points of intersection at x equals minus 1, x equals 2, and x equals 2. So this area in here, we're going to have the integral from minus 1 to 2 because the red curve is on top. It goes first. We do red curve minus blue curve. And once again, we need to subtract the whole of the second curve. All right, let's make this easier to work with by collecting like terms. So this here is going to be this area here. But now, if I want to find that area there, well, I'm going to need to take the integral from 2 to 4. But it's going to be this time the blue curve minus the red curve, because now the blue curve is on top. So the only thing that will change here is the signs. Each of these terms will change sign if I do blue minus red rather than red minus blue. So going ahead and evaluating this integral, I get 15.75, and this integral gives me 5.3 recurring. So make sure you know how to do that. Of course, we just integrate, increase the power by 1, divide by the new power, so it's x to the power of 4 on 4, minus 5x cubed on 3, plus x squared plus 8x, evaluated between these two points. So remember that you can get your graphics calculator to check each of these integrals. You can graph them and then second trace and use the integral symbol. So this 15.75 is this area, 5.3 recurring is this area. And so the total area shaded, those two added together, 21.083 recurring, and of course, it's units squared. All right, thank you so much for tuning into this video. This has been the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Have a great day.